Starship Flight 10 is around the corner, and I find myself both equally excited and experiencing a sense of existential dread. Without a doubt, Starship is the most popular and exciting thing going on right now, and it's hard not to look forward to their test flights and hope for the best. With the last three flights not going according to plan, it feels like we're in some sort of strange limbo, and if this flight doesn't go successfully, it feels like almost a lost year. However, if the past three flights have taught us anything, it's how quickly they're able to recover and try again. Even with the static fire explosion last month at Massey's, SpaceX was quickly able to adapt, turn around, turn the launch mount into a temporary test site, and do the remaining steps that they needed to do to lead up towards Flight 10. While the flight plan is really similar to Flight 4, there is a handful of things that they are trying for the first time on this one. So far, the most successful part of this program has been the booster catch, and they're not even going to attempt it this time. But by planning on doing a splashdown, there's a couple of things that they want to test with the booster, such as different engine configurations during the firing, simulating the middle engines, at least one of them being out, and seeing if one of the engines from the middle ring could be able to compensate. And you know, test out the structural loads again and see what sort of failure data points they can collect to strengthen boosters in the future. So although disappointing that they're not planning on doing a catch, there is still some useful data that they can get out of this flight, even with a failure. As for Starship, the upper stage, we are still at the same point that we were at the beginning of the year, where they're wanting to experiment with these different types of heat shield materials to see if they're better than what they're currently using, or even have some that have active cooling to see if that would be a better system, even though it might be more complex, to make the vehicle more reliable and safe to someday allow humans on board which of course is just one of the many ambitions that they have with this vehicle. They're still trying to get the Pez dispenser payload deployment system to work with some simulated dummy Starlink satellites. SpaceX really needs this test flight to work. Everything needs to go well. We can handle some partial failures, but there's some critical tests that have been delaying the program. Any improvements that they can make to the booster is great. We want that to be even more reliable in the future. But if we can't get Starship to work, if they can't get Starship to work, they really need to get Starship to work. They need to figure out the best configuration for the heat shield tiles. They need to get the Pez dispenser working so that, and start working on whatever their next payload deployment system is going to be for large satellites. The engine relight and I mean just all of the plumbing in general to not have any more leaks and ruptures and problems that we've seen on the previous three flights. They need to do a full orbital test flight and test out different reentry scenarios. They need to do the propellant transfer test where they transfer fuel from one starship to another, which is going to be a key, key part of all of their future plans. Even if they don't want to work on all of the lunar stuff, they definitely want to do all the Martian stuff, which isn't going to happen unless they can do propellant transfer and refuel these vehicles before they get sent on to Mars or more in the near term, the lunar stuff. I really hope that it's not just a small team of people at SpaceX working on the human landing system for the Artemis program to land astronauts on the moon. I don't get why they don't have ambitious plans with the moon, even if they don't have plans to set up a base, but using it as a test bed for their Mars program. It's a lot better to test these things out right here in our own backyard before being millions of miles away and two years away from any sort of help from Earth. I don't know. And yet, the excitement comes from if everything goes according to plan and we can continue with all of these objectives, then it'll only be a couple of years before we start seeing some incredible things happening. So much is riding on this, not just for SpaceX, but the space industry in general. NASA is reliant on SpaceX to deliver the human landing starship for the Artemis 3 mission and other missions after that. 
and more of like a soft power kind of thing and just the general attitude towards spaceflight in general is depending on the success of Starship. If this program is successful, we could see an explosion of innovation worldwide. Future generations would be inspired for decades, maybe even centuries. If the entire program were to fail, it would set back humanity's progression in untold ways, untold and unknown butterfly effects that we can't even foresee right now. If this particular mission were to fail, the near term, it would probably be no big deal for SpaceX, and they would be able to quickly recover and have the next ones ready to go within a couple of weeks, probably. This is a test program, and the whole point of these flights is to find the bugs and refine the system until you get it working. Maybe the plague of problems that they've been experiencing this year will be over with once Block 3 comes online, or Version 3, or whatever nomenclature they come up with next. I'm really excited for it. I'm looking forward to the flight. I'm hoping that everything goes as well as possibly could. And yet at the same time, I cannot help but be having a small panic attack as to what the outcome of this flight is going to be. So here's hoping that everything goes well. I know in the near term that everything would be fine for SpaceX unless Elon completely loses it if it has a major failure. But I don't think that that's going to happen. I think that they will continue to move onwards and upwards and strive for success, strive for the goals that they have been aiming for with this program, even if they don't get everything that they want out of it. Just a little bit of success out of it could be a game changer for them. Just launching Starlinks with it is going to be a huge moneymaker for them and enable them to keep making refinements and come up with all the more advanced versions that we want to see. It just might not be on the timeline that we would hope for. And if everything goes well on this flight, they might be able to push forward at lightning speed. And if that happens, I don't know if any of us are ready for it. It's already hard enough as it is to keep up with everything going on in the space industry. And if we can get to the point where we are seeing a launch of Starship every two weeks, it's going to be a crazy awesome time. So if the schedule holds and it does launch this Sunday on August 24th, we're not going to be doing our usual live show and instead we'll do a watch along party and we can find out together live what's going to happen with at least this particular test flight and then we can worry about what comes next afterwards. If SpaceX needs more time to prepare and the launch slips for whatever reason in the next week, then we'll likely have our regular live show. In any case, I am very much looking forward to the outcome of Flight 10 and hope that everything goes as well as it possibly can. So until the next time I see you guys, keep moving onwards and upwards, and don't forget, Ad Astra, to the stars.